In a previous video in the Behind the Code series, we examined the road to Minus World in Super Mario Bros. by dissecting level layout and associated code for scroll stops and warp zone objects in World 1-2. Many of you mentioned other versions, some well-known and others that are more obscure. Let's do a code compare for six versions of Super Mario Bros. from the original release all the way up to All-Stars on the Super Nintendo and get an idea of how the developers dealt with the gateway to Minus World. We will also attempt to restore Minus World to All-Stars. Spoilers, it works, but needed a little extra help. Hello, welcome to Displaced Gamers. My name is Chris and this is Talking Code Episode 5. Let's call this one Retro Changelog. Probably best to start with a timeline as a reference. It's important to note that commercial release date is not an indicator of software completion, but it does serve as a nice reference for building a timeline. The original Super Mario Bros. was released in September-October 1985. In first quarter 1986, Vs. Super Mario Bros. debuted as an arcade game. The Famicom Disk System was released on February 1, 1986. Super Mario Bros. was a launch title, so we have a conversion from cartridge to FDS several months after original release. Difficult levels from Versus inspire the creation of Super Mario Bros. 2 for the FDS, released on June 3, 1986. Let's refer to this one as Lost Levels to help differentiate all of these similar titles. In August of 1986, Super Mario Bros. was available as a selectable game on the PlayChoice 10 arcade system. In December of 1986, All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros. was released as a retool of Lost Levels. It was originally given out in a contest on the Japanese radio program with the same name, All Night Nippon. In 1987, Europe and Australia received a 50Hz release of the game with tweaked hitboxes to compensate for slower game speed. Through the late 80s and early 90s, Mario's combined with Duck Hunt and World Class Track Meet in a combo cartridge. In summer of 1993, Super Mario All-Stars was released and included both the aforementioned original title and Lost Levels, as well as International Super Mario Bros. 2 and Mario 3. In 1994, the Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World Kart was released and added Super Mario World, as the title would suggest. Now, for this video, my focus is on six of these releases. The original, the FDS port, the Versus Arcade adaptation, Lost Levels, All Night Nippon, and the 1993 Super Mario All-Stars release. To compare various versions to the original, let's consider a bit of level layout as well as code. There are four instances of code worth checking for each game. The scroll unlocker enemy, the scroll stop for the warp zone, the pipe destination logic for warp zones, and the lookup values for the world destinations themselves. I've numbered these areas to help us differentiate the code we are viewing as we are going to see a lot of different code snippets. Please note that I'm going to move quickly through the code for each of the games as I assume you've already seen the Minus World episode of Behind the Code and are somewhat familiar with Warp Zone logic. Let's start with the FDS port. This one is often cited as noteworthy as traveling to Minus World places you in a different level versus the cartridge version. Dissecting level differences between versions deserves its own video, Let's stick to the journey and not the destination, for now. The FDS comparison is fairly straightforward. The logic is identical between cartridge and disk for all four areas. The only thing worth noting would be the fact that the addresses of the code are different. This makes sense as the FDS game requires room for the BIOS and the RAM cart at the upper end of ROM for booting the disk. We talked about cartridge versus disk for The Legend of Zelda in Talking Code Episode 2 if you want more details on these two mediums. Now for Versus Super Mario Bros., the arcade game. Nintendo appears to have known about the Minus World exploit at this point and elected to remove the bug from the arcade machine by editing the level. The two bricks in the ceiling to the left of the L-pipe have been removed, and this eliminates the possibility of accessing Minus World using the standard method. Now, block clipping in Super Mario Bros. can be performed in multiple ways, of course and a skilled player can still access Minus World using alternative means. Let's look at the code. The scroll unlocker enemy remains unchanged. The scroll lock warp zone logic also remains unchanged. The warp zone pipe selection code remains unchanged. However, the lookup for the warp zone destinations does contain a modification. The 876 warp zone has been reduced to a single pipe that will take the player to World 6 alone. As you might expect, the center world 6 pipe is now surrounded by hex values of 24, so the game writes a blank space above the now missing pipes. Lost Levels arrived on the Famicom Disk System and took some levels from Versus, and this is where things start to get interesting. 
the scroll unlocker enemy's increment warp zone control statement has been removed. As you know, this is what creates the gateway to Minus World. Valid values were 4, 5, and 6, and this statement was responsible for setting warp zone control to an invalid value of 1. The logic for scroll lock object warp zone was overhauled. All warp zones have been changed to single pipes, and valid values fed to warp zone control now span 80 hex to 8a rather than 456. Some pipes will send the player back to an earlier world. Along with this is the corresponding logic change to find warp zone destination offsets. Rather than perform an offset calculation, the logic simply filters out the lowest four bits from warp zone control for the offset. So I would say it's a fair assumption that Lost Levels had a very deliberate cleanup of the warp zone functions. The scroll lock unlock bug remains, but the Minus World exploitation code has been remediated. This is a much more direct solution versus the quick and dirty hot fix of removing the two bricks next to the L pipe in areas 1, 2, and 4, 2 in Versus Super Mario Bros. Since Versus was mass produced for an international arcade release just a few months after the original, it makes sense that it would have a quick fix, if anything at all. Lost Levels borrowed from Versus, overhauled the warp zones, and fixed the increment bug before June 1986. This brings us to December of 1986 in All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros., a game that included levels from the original title Versus and Lost Levels. The engine is based off of Lost Levels, which means we have updated logic for things like physics. The most obvious change from the start would be several of the graphics. Since a majority of the levels come from Mario 1, this means the Warp Zone Pipe trios have returned. How does that figure into Warp Zone logic? The scroll unlocker enemy, like Lost Levels, has had the erroneous increment statement removed. Since the Lost Levels engine was tweaked for the creation of All Night Nippon, it makes sense that the fix would still be in place. Next up is the Warp Zone Scroll Stop. This one is a bit of a hybrid of the original game geared toward pipe trios, plus the extended worlds A, B, C, D from Lost Levels. With the reduced number of warp zones, we have a reduced volume of code here. Valid values are still inside a range starting at 80 hex. Thankfully, no warp zones take you backward. Warp Zone Control performs a bit filter, similar to the original game, but three bits instead of two. Mario's X position is relevant, as we do have warp zones with multiple pipes. As we work in pipe trios now, the single pipes are, of course, flanked by the blank value of 24 hex. The Mario engine saw numerous iterations and optimizations of warp zones throughout 1986. All five of these were cranked out almost within a single year's time. After the release of the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo, it was time to port the NES titles to the 16-bit system what would be used for a starting point for the first entry in the series. Despite engine evolution through Versus, Lost Levels, and All Night Nippon, it was the original game's physics and quirks that were to be included in the All-Stars collection. This meant that we would probably need to use the original game engine as a base. What about those bug fixes and optimizations from 1986? Could they be included? The first thing we notice is that the increment warp zone control statement has returned to the scroll unlocker enemy. Well, if the original Super Mario Bros. code was used as a starting point, perhaps it would be more accurate to say it never left. It was not removed as part of the conversion to the Super Nintendo. Otherwise, this code is pretty much the same. You'll notice that the RAM locations for Mario's Y position and Y page have changed, and we are now using 24-bit addressing as we are on the Super Nintendo. That increment statement is what allowed us to access Minus World in the original NES version. Let's see where the code goes in terms of invalid values and the Warp 5 Warp Zone with the two blank labels for the side pipes. Next up is the Scroll Lock Warp Zone processing. This area is also identical. We have a RAM address change for our below ground above ground check for the World 4 2 Warp Zones, but otherwise our structure is the same. I suppose this makes sense. Even if they change the ROM layout for Warp Zone Pipe Trio destinations, the pre-offset calculation values remain 4, 5, and 6. So let's see what happens at Warp Zone Pipe Selection. Ah, this code reveals a lot. A very large chunk of fresh code has been added to Warp Pipe destination logic used when Mario enters a pipe. And this is a patch. The logic looks familiar because it's a copy and paste from the scroll lock warp zone code. Look. Rather than worry about the original logic to find what led to Minus World, a second check for a valid warp zone control value occurs here. 
So long as it is four or greater, it skips ahead to the offset calculation and therefore resumes the original Super Mario Brothers code. If it's a value from one to three, it performs the same task that was used to set up the warp zone and even overwrites the invalid value in RAM with the proper value just before calculating the pipe trio offset. This fix, the removal of a single line of code made for lost levels, accomplishes the same thing as the copy paste into All Stars. So even if you manage to perform the block clip trick and get that invalid value into warp zone control, it is patched with some copy paste tweak code inside warp zone pipe destination logic. So I did what we're all thinking and just bypassed the check. Now boarding the train to minus world. Wait a second, it didn't work. I got sent back to the beginning of the game. Guess what? There's a second check in the middle of world transition. It checks to see if your world number is between zero and seven, that is world one to world eight. And if it isn't, it just sends you back to the beginning of the game. Well, that's no fun. So we'll just override this check. And? Uh-oh. It froze. That's unfortunate. But perhaps we can substitute other values besides 24 hex and attempt to reach an invalid world that works. All right. So I had to make a decision on how we would rotate in various destinations to these warp pipes and which worlds we would use. <laughs> there are 255 possibilities. I chose one in particular that you might like. This one takes three game genie codes. And here we have a water level. It is short and it loops. So use those three codes and tell your friend, what are you talking about? Minus world is totally in all stars and then show this off. To show other worlds, let's change how we access them. This time we'll only disable the second world check and just use the standard welcome to warp zone scroll stop for the first warp zone at the end of world one two. We can then repurpose that far right pipe to send us anywhere we want to go. This is world T. It's one of my favorites. We exit a large castle, get to swim, have crazy colored blocks, lava bubbles, fire bars, hammer brothers, random girder platforms, and a disappearing Bowser attempting to defend the exit after the flagpole. While you can complete the level, things go nuts after you exit. Some worlds you attempt may start you in this state after you enter the warp pipe. Just be aware of this if you experiment. Next up is world U. This one looks really cool because you're swimming inside a castle and can see the water effect on the castle background. Sadly, it crashes <laughs> once you reach this point. Next up is World B. Just like your normal castle level with fast Koopa Troopas and Skyfish, you can complete this level, get the ending text, clear the timer, and it loops. Next is World Water. The performance is very sluggish and almost every Koopa Troopa is stuck to a twin. You can complete the level and it loops. Next is another water looking world that looks like snow underwater with sprite priority issues. <laughs> it looks pretty uneventful un until that happens. The cool thing is you can complete this first level and move to a second. This level can also be completed. Unfortunately, the game freezes when you enter the third level. Next up is Star World, which is a bonus room that loops infinitely upon itself. This is Wave World, which has Bowser in it. Unfortunately, when you reach the bag at the end, it freezes. A second Wave World is a castle with invisible platforms. They are likely prioritized so that they are behind the background layer. This presents an interesting challenge. No text when you finish this one, but it does loop. It's possible the text is behind the background. In case you want to control your destination, you start off by choosing what you want to do, require a block clip, or just go down the far right pipe. For step two, set your destination. You'll need an address and a value. The address is a ROM location. The value is your world destination. As of the creation of this video, there is a website that can take an address with a value and translate it into a Super Nintendo Game Genie code. I'll provide a link to it. So choose your method, disable your valid checks, and tack on your destination world Game Genie code in combination, and you are good to go. 
I recommend an emulator or flash cart with save states close to the warp zone because otherwise you're going to have to play through a lot of Mario just to try each world. In summary, 1985 gave us Super Mario Bros. The code was tweaked numerous times in 1986. Minus World received a hotfix that wasn't quite enough. The bug received a proper fix later in the year for engines used by Lost Levels and All Night Nippon. Several years later, the original code made its return for a port to the Super Nintendo and was patched by adding new checks for invalid values in two places inside the Pipe to World destination logic. Well, I hope that gives you a proper behind-the-scenes journey when it comes to how the Minus World bug was handled throughout various iterations of the original Super Mario Bros. If you experiment with worlds in All-Stars, please share your favorites in a comment on this video. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon if you're interested, and thanks for watching.